Well, Gates is off his stool first. And perhaps the feeling is that he's got to make the running in this final round. In our first bout here, Hogan perhaps taking control towards the back end of the first round and certainly for the lion's share of that second round with a little bit more accuracy and power to his punches. Gates tries to unload, but he's out of range as they trade toe-to-toe -to -toe again in the centre of the ring. And Gates getting a little wild in there at the moment, but he does connect with a good right hand, and that was a good right hand too. But on the top of the head of Hogan, who was just a little off balance perhaps, and once again, they step into the centre of the ring to face each other as we reach the closing stages of this fight. But Gates is in trouble again in his own corner, a left to right, and then another right hand there from Hogan. And Gates is showing tremendous courage because he must have been hurt by some of these punches, which have been tremendously accurate from the unbeaten fighter from North Wales. Mickey Gates hanging on in there. He's doing well, Gates, you know, Shane, like I said, a lot of courage. It's that, that, that jab there now from Hogan that's getting the way through. He's backing him, Gates up. Well, it looks as though two power are going to make a winning start here as we enter the closing stages of this first bout. It's been all Hogan in this round. Gates very much on the back foot as the referee feels duty-bound to separate them again. And I'm sure Gates was happy for the breather, but he's still coming forward, gamely. At the moment, though, the quality combinations and the accuracy are coming from the man dressed in blue, Clyde Hogan, who remains unbeaten, and it looks as though he's going to extend that record here based on what we've seen so far. Can Gates find something in the last few seconds of this fight? He looks awfully tired in there. It it's been a tremendous pace, Mickey. An unbelievable pace. You know, they should be so proud of themselves. You know, especially Gates. You can tell he's you know, a bit of experience compared to Hogan. But he's hung in and now. You know, Hogan's found that extra bit of quality, especially with that nice jab. As you see there, he's doing it again. Give himself a bit of space. Two lovely straight jabs, snapping back the head of Michael Gates, and it's been the accuracy. It's oh, been what a so tremendous bad start the evening. And he's straight on the front foot again. There was a good counter. Right hook from Gates. It's once again, they're separated. But it's Hogan on the front foot. A left and a right combination. He's got Gates on the ropes again. So a win for the two power man, a performance that gave Hogan the best boxer of the night award. Yeah, it means everything. Obviously, we need to get the ball rolling as quick as you can. You know, you can't take for granted any fighter that three power brings to, you know, bring to this boxers! show. Boxers! All we can do is just hope that we can keep rolling, keep getting these wins behind us. Things got even better for them. Dab Holmes survived an early onslaught from Luke Brewer, but claimed victory largely because he landed more scoring points against a top-class opponent. Brewer remains on the attack here, comes in low. Not many of these punches are scoring punches right now from the red gloves of Luke Brewer. Well, that's the end of the fight. Two down from the first two bouts, the defending champions and most successful unit in the history of army boxing badly needed a win. Could Joe Waterworth deliver at light welterweight against Matt Benj wearing blue? Philip Studd describes the action at the start of the third round. And the action visibly more intense at the start of this deciding round with both fighters, I'm sure, making conscious that they have to produce something big to get the decision. Interestingly, this is Ricky Atten's old weight. I'm sure if he's looking at it tonight, they'd be proud of these boys. They're both going at it. Great jab on the back foot from Waterworth. Again, that pressure from Matt Benz trying to force the contest in his favour. Yeah, Waterworth just making that uh, mistake of uh, you know, moving left onto his opponent's backhand there and obviously being caught with one or two shots there. He did connect, however, with a left hook in that uh, exchange, and things certainly warmed up after a more quiet beginning at the back end of that third round. Decision, red. Game very much back on here. 
And so to the fourth contest at welterweight. Steve Preston, only a month out of training with three para, up against a very classy opponent in two paras, Chris Oliver. Back to our commentators for one of the outstanding bouts of the night. For the first time, Chris Oliver. Oh, another excellent combination, left, right and left, and Preston in trouble again, he's trying to keep those gloves up, but this is a furious onslaught now from Oliver, who's looking to finish it inside the distance, and it's a count, a standing count, for Steve Preston. A great to stand attack that was. And again, going in for it there, nice to see him step across and throw that backhand. Oliver, the ropes. straight he's back at him. Ropes, yeah. ropes, and then he switched downstairs to the body, good boy. Oliver desperate to have another stoppage victory on his record, but Preston so brave, determined to prevent that happening. And at the moment, he's looking like he could well do because he's still full of energy and trying to come forward gamely, even though the blood is pouring again from his nose. As Oliver misses for a change with a combination, Preston moving backwards out of range. I bet, I bet Chris Oliver can't believe how gutsy Steve Preston is because he took some heavy shots here tonight and he's still marching forward. So they breathe these Paris tough. They certainly do. Chris Oliver, who's held sway from the first bell, must be wondering how his opponent's still standing. Another lovely combination, the left and the right hand, and once again the face of Stephen Preston, horribly blooded. Well. Oliver's thrown pretty much everything at him and he's still standing and perhaps Oliver now feels well I'll just stay out of trouble and see this through and yep. settle for a points victory which it almost certainly is going to be well tremendous tremendous credit goes to Steve Preston there because he was outclassed out experienced out punched from the first belt to the last but he stood his ground I'm just trying to uh, take this as a learning curve and uh, I'll bounce back Great support here tonight. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Couldn't ask for anything better. Two and three power in the final. What more could you want? So at the interval, two power had a lead of 3-1. And remember, they only needed two more wins to take the title from their arch rivals. But it's no coincidence that three power hadn't been beaten in army boxing for a decade. And they came out flying in the fifth contest in the shape of Liam Giles against his light middleweight opponent, Jamie Found. Philip Studd picks up the commentary in round two. I know it's the intensity of this contest, fellas, is that before you blink the rounds over, you know, it's, 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 it's that engrossed, you get that engrossed in the contest, you know, two minutes into the flyby. Every fighter this evening has given their all. Tremendous exchange there, nice left hook from Giles, which did find its range. Oh, oh and a huge a left hook, knocks Jamie Found down. That was the best punch of the night, right on the jaw of the 23-year-old from Coventry, visibly dazed, and he's done tremendously well to get to his feet, but the referee calls it off, and that's our first stoppage of the evening. It's spectacular stuff. Harris has given everything. The action showed no sign of letting up, heading into the sixth bout, a brutal middleweight between Ronnie Harris from two para facing the three para captain, Jay Williams. We join it in the third. They were 3-1 up before a spectacular stoppage by Liam Giles over Jamie Found in their light middleweight battle before this one. This, of course, being fought at middleweight, the 75 kilo category. I'd say for middleweights, they move ever so fast around the ring. They throw an awful lot of volume of punches. Oh, lovely combination, one of the best so far from Ronnie Harris, but Williams is so strong, he shook off those punches Williams and then comes in with a huge left hook to the jaw of Harris. But Williams won't be denied, Phil, will he? He wants, he wants this so badly. Well, you just sense that if one of these guys really connects, it could be over. And at the moment, it looks more like Williams doing that than Harris. But Harris is battling gamely. He's Harris trying to get back in. strong, though, Phil, you can tell. He's really strong. You know, he's he, his head jolted back a few times. Tremendous atmosphere in here as the crowd crank up the noise again. Right Big overhead left hand there from Williams found its range well Harris can take a punch all right he's up against a guy who's enjoyed nine victories and I've you can see why Harris. Williams has really rocked him back a few times and every time young Harris comes firing back 
Well, Williams. If credit to their coach, he's got, got them in tremendous shape and they need to be. Williams with a slightly bloody nose there, which is uh, a little misleading in terms of the action we've seen. For the first time in the contest, Harris is actually marching forward. He's been in the back foot throughout where Williams is pushing him back. Well, Harris has certainly connected from time to time with some good shots, but oh, there's another big left hook from Williams. That rocked Harris back and he did well to stay on his feet. Another tremendously compelling and exciting battle here between these two great rivals, two para and three para, as the bell sounds, and no wonder the two embrace and send a ring. Terrific entertainment. Red. Yeah, it's red. It's red, you better believe it. Yeah, we knew it was going to be close. Uh, that's what you get with a red final. Next up, three para's David Webb, looking to push them into the lead for the first time. But Carwin James had Referee other moves, ideas. Heading into the, the final round, Webb Webb's had it all to do. Time is running out for him to turn things around here. And at the moment, he seems lost as to know what to do in the face of the James onslaught. And James still looking very strong, although he did take a left hook there. Comes back with a left hook of his own, though. And he's on the front foot as we enter the closing stages here. Another gripping contest. Webb showing plenty of tenacity, but he's not been able to come up with anything to really trouble Carwin James. That was one of his better punches right there. A little bit more success. Well, tremendous performance, you'd have to say, from two paras, Carwin James. Just 20 years of age from Newcastle. He's only been in the team five months. Because he used the ring really, really well. Well, they shake hands. The winner, by unanimous decision, blue. Well, there you go. And that was pretty unanimous. I don't think anyone could argue with that victory. And two para are back with a bang here this evening. They've taken a couple of heavy hits to the previous two bouts, but they've responded magnificently in the shape of Carwin James, who dominated that fight from the first bell to the last. And it all means, after seven bouts, that para, two para, are four, three in front. It couldn't be tighter. It couldn't be more exciting, John. The win for James meant two para had half a hand on the title. There was no room for error. The cruiserweight contest was an extraordinary fight. Gaz Innes in blue and three paras James Nelson fought their way to a virtual standstill. We pick it up with Philip Studd in the third round. How can Innes, with this tremendous record, of having won all of his eight amateur bouts, respond to being shaken to the core by Edinburgh's James Nelson in round two. Nelson looking to dictate by being clever little counters. Well, again, the bravery stands out, doesn't it? Innes took some fearful punishment at the end of that second round, but he's giving it his all again. But he's looking quite tired, and Nelson perhaps senses blood here. The opportunity to finish the job. He's, he's nailing Gaz Innes right now. The punches are big and they're accurate. And Innes, you sense, is ready to go, but back he comes and he's throws his own punches. Innes. He's fighting on a pure heart. And he's pushing himself forward. He needs to take the intensity away from Nelson. Nelson's dictating here. Two He's great warriors, Innes laying it all on the line here. You sense just a punch from defeat, but he's looking to nail a big one of his own and he's more than capable. Closing stages of this fight. Come on, ref, let him get on with it. It's a great contest. Unquestionably, Nelson is ahead. He's Innes needs something big. Nelson, Phil, he's just, he's pot shot him now, pot shot him. Innes is just taking him. Innes coming forward, but the Nelson punches are raining in on his head. He's just been that bit more clever, Nelson, in the last two rounds. Innes is just so brave, though. Cries of three oh, power up reverberate around this arena as a very tired-looking left hand hits fresh air from Innes. He's out on his feet, but he's still battling. 
You and have to say, what a performance by Nelson. You know, both guys, credit where it's due. Fantastic. Ooh. And there was another peach of a punch. Two shots. Well, that was tremendous. And no wonder the two of them embrace at the end of it. Absolutely everything you could wish for in the space of six minutes. Heart, bravery, fortitude, and some huge punching from both men, but particularly from three powers, James Nelson. He's put in a consummate performance there, Mickey. I think that look at this replay here, you see the quality from Nelson in the end shone through. I think he's just edged the contest, but what a great contest. I think he's made it for all. Uh, it was a masterclass from Nelson there against a very, very formidable opponent. And it surely means that we're going to the wire. And it's fitting, isn't it, quite frankly, Tony, that it appears as though it's going to go down to the very last fight. Oh, yeah. That, and what a great conclusion it will be. I mean, right down to the wire. It was interesting just to hear Nelson there come out his corner and said that had he won that. I mean, when he watches this back, he'll uh, be very proud of his performance. And hats off to both guys. It was a, a terrific tear-up. Well, the applause rings round this packed arena. And again, great to see the two fighters trying to knock the seven referee, bells of each The referee each would other, like to congratulate both boxers smiles. for a hard fight. Yeah. I think we can all echo that. And you wouldn't believe that these guys have got to share breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Scott's quite bad as full time, isn't it? Yeah. Winner by unanimous decision, Red. There you go. It was inevitable from the second round. James Nelson really dominated that fight. Gazinis showed tremendous heart. He was in big trouble at one stage. He took a count. But he lasted to the end, but it was a great victory for Nelson, and it means that it's all down to the final fight. Some might say this was too close to call, but it left three para's nerves frayed almost to breaking point. Joe Allen against James English from two para. Going into the last round of a pulsating heavyweight contest, Allen was ahead on points. A terrific contest, so keenly contested, so, so close. And it's all come down to this final two minutes. And this fight, trust me, is still in the balance. And no wonder they're both going for it here. They both know that they're so close to pulling off something special. It's going to be a question of so near and yet so far for one of these two. Again, as soon as we, any, each boxer switches off, and it could obviously be curtains for them. It's imperative that they do men focus throughout. Hey. They've obviously both been tired by the corner. It rests in his last round. Come on, both going to be a bit more busier. You know, this is it. Going to be the hero for the night. Very even round once again. Neither have landed with anything telling yet. Is there going to be a big haymaker to finish this? We're talking about a couple of heavyweights here with big, big punches. Good left jab again from Allen which nearly had the green gum shield of James English right. on the move. And he connected there with the left hook as well, one of the best punches of the fight so far. English took it well. It's building up to a crescendo here, both in and outside the ring. So little time remaining. It's right on the line, it couldn't be closer. Four wins each, and this fight on a knife edge. Crowd willing these two guys to go for it with every last ounce of their energy. Nice combination from Allen. Left and then a right and then another left. Is he making the better scoring in these crucial closing stages? It's very tip for tack, you know. One, one scores and the other comes firing back. I will not be judging this, this last round. No more than a few seconds to go. Have you got it, Tony? Oh, brilliant. Allen's got it for me. Yeah, he's just been the more, you know, he's adapted. Oh, and... lovely left hook from Allen. English took it well, but it landed and it scored nonetheless. Again, and he, just... he wants his title. 
not for himself, but also for his, the rest of, the of his unit. Inches oh. away from us. Oh, and Alan slipped. He's down. Well, he's taking account. That could have decided it's home. He's OK, but I think scoring-wise, that could have decided the contest. Well, talk about a change in momentum as Alan off balance hits the canvas after English for much of that round was second best. It couldn't have been more dramatic. Has that just tilted it in two Paris favour, Mickey Campwell? Well, I would not like to be a judge in his last contest, Tony. It? So close. Right at the end of the fight as well. Barely more than a few seconds remaining, and there it is. Right it's the left side. It's the right hand that sends him down. So who's got the decision? Who are going to be crowned champions? By a majority decision, oh, red. Yeah. Well, there you go. Despite the knockdown, it's Joe Allen's fight. And it means that three para remain unbeaten in more than a decade now. What a way to finish the evening. It could so easily have been two paras night, but the most exciting of finishes to a totally absorbing night's boxing ended with three para keeping the army title. It's a wonderful night for boxing, I'm going to say all that, aren't I? Um, but literally, I've followed these guys for the last six months and what they have pulled out of the bag in terms of fitness, dieting, uh, concentration, sacrifices for both teams, having done a bit of it, a small portion of it, it's astonishing what they've done tonight. And um, all credit to any fighter that gets in there because they give so much.